So uh, today we will talk about Azure Architecture and its subscription management. Okay, so I'm going to explain uh, uh, like uh, how to create a Azure uh, free account and uh, Azure account activation and uh, what are the different uh, Azure web services are available in our uh, Azure resources and managing the subscription, how the subscriptions are managed at the management group level on the Azure portal and managing Azure with uh, Azure portal, like uh, how we can uh, uh, what I can say, how we can manage a subscription and uh, our back policies on the Azure subscription and the portal level. And uh, I'll give you a little bit of overview of Azure Resource Manager. Azure Resource Manager, which will help us to create, update, and delete uh, the resources on portal. And uh, I'll talk about the global infrastructures and the region and a uh, little bit of uh, management services and we'll talk about the uh, Azure architecture, uh, how the things will come and how the architectures are maintained on the infra level. Okay, so let's get started. So whenever you wanted to create any account, first thing you have to go to this uh, um, Azure Cloud Computing, go to the home page and you have to select a free account. So you guys are interested to uh, create a free account or like how, how what is the plan of your implementation or how you practice at your end. Like are you guys going to create a free account and uh, tie that account with your credit card and you will go for implementation? Like uh, what is the plan? Yes, sir. Just see, as I told, I'm into uh, uh -huh. delivering the projects and programs. So I would like to have detailed understanding from your uh, sessions. Uh -huh. Yeah, rather than going and uh, implementing or doing the things. Okay, so uh, your account creation and all is taken care by your RT, what I can say. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And uh, Sukruta, how about you? <laughs> okay, uh, but I would like to learn like on hands. Okay, for that, no, you have to create your own uh, subscription and a free account. Okay, and once you create a free account, if you face any difficulty in creating a free account, you just let me know. I'll help you to create it, uh, create a free account for you. Uh, that cost, okay, no need to worry about the cost. Uh, we can manage the cost. Okay, we can put a cap on the cost where it should not cross certain limit. Okay, if you once you create free account, you can try uh, with that account. You can do uh, creating, updating, deleting all those resources at your end. Okay. Okay, sure, Neeraj. Okay, sure. So how to? I'll just show you a demo. Like you can directly go to the Azure and create Azure account. Okay, so you can see this is the sign up. And there is a start free, start free, and you can just log in to the sign up and you can create your own account and you can give your email number, email details, and all. Then automatically the Azure account will create for you. Okay, so you can even go pay as you go model also. Okay. Able to yes. see the screen, I think. Is that uh, are you on any browser? Sorry, or it, are you on any browser or, or on the slide itself? No, no, I am on the browser. You guys are not able to see. Uh, no, no, oh, so you share the whole screen. You guys are able to see now, at least. Yes. Perfect. So this is what like uh, you go to this, just type this Azure, create Azure account and then uh, you can just click for the link and you can just start free here and try to create a, uh, your account like email ID, password and all and then try to log in. First it will ask for the free, 30 days free trial uh, will be there. Uh, all Not all the resources will be available, few of the resources will be available. Post that you can just uh, go on PLC Go model, upgrade your subscription, and then you can try working on that. Okay, 
So that is uh, one of the important point which I need to have. Okay. So, so how we can see uh, our subscription in the portal? I'll well, just go to the uh, portal. So subscription. Once you do, so this is you can see content. Okay. So this model pay as you go model, you the offering will be pay as you go model. Okay. Once you create, automatically you will be your offering will be pay as you go. If you update, if you are into free, then it will be on free. So this is a subscription. You can define your own subscription name and you can. Okay. You just let me know. Uh, yeah. Uh, Sukruta, when you want to create, post the session, I uh, will do that. Okay, for you. Okay, uh, sure. So, 30 days I can use the right? Ah, 30 days you can use it, but not all the services will be available for you. Okay, okay. few of the resource uh, services are available, you can use it. Okay, but still I can work on it, right? Yes, yes, you can still work. So you can still play around with the Azure code. Oh, thanks. Yeah. So this is the free account. You can create and then you can just say start free. Just I showed you. Once you start free, it will ask you for the verification, sign in verification. Like I, it will ask you for date of birth, and you should enter your verification code, and then you have to enter the captcha. Then it will um, give you a sign in. Okay, and then. One thing you have to remember is when you are creating an account, uh, this email ID and uh, the password uh, which you guys are using and the number should not be changed because once it tied to your credit card, so the same thing will be followed. Uh, okay, so that is one of the important. Okay, the phone number and uh, username and the password. You can use your Gmail also. You can use your you can create a separate uh, Gmail account and you can try to create that one also. Okay. So this is what about creating an Azure account. So once this account is done, so you wanted to and the email, it will ask for the credit card information. So first, for the first time, once you enter your credit card details, no, it will deduct one rupee. Again, that one rupee will be credited to your account. Okay. Because for the authentication purpose, for the credit card authentication purpose, it will they will deduct one rupee from your account and then they will deposit also. Okay, once you Azure account is, you can utilize this two hundred dollars for thirty days on the portal and you can play around with the system. Okay, if you have exhausted your free credit card, then you may have to move to P as you go model. So after thirty days. Uh, you can move your uh, subscription to Piazigo model if you need it. Otherwise, you can suspend your account. So this is the page. It will ask about identification number and all, and it will ask all those things. Okay. So these are the terminologies which we create and one we need to start creating the free account. Okay. Now. Uh, let's talk about uh, this free one. So free account is done, then you are able to log into other portal. Now, I'll talk about different Azure web services available in uh, our uh, portal, Azure portal. So, Azure web apps. So, Azure web app is one of the past environment. It allows you to publish the apps running on multiple frameworks and the languages. So, what do you mean by Azure App Service? So, let me show you what you mean. What is an app service? I just close this. Okay, this is app service. So, this is an app service we call. It. Okay, this is an app service. So, with this app service is fully managed by the fully managed platform for building, deploying, and scaling web apps. Okay. It supports multiple programming languages, including the, uh, like uh, we have a stack here. It supports multiple programming languages, including .NET, Java, and Node.js, PHP. And you can deploy web apps also, REST API also, mobile API also as a backend. 
okay so what i am talking about i am talking about different azure web services and these are the web services azure web apps azure logic apps azure api apps and azure mobile apps i'll show you one by one okay so now this is the web app so the key features for this uh, web app is it it will uh, do automatic scaling based on the demand suppose 10000 requests 10000 users to 50000 users got increased automatically it will scale up and scale down i'll show you one demo in our next uh, upcoming sessions when i'm explaining this web app because we have a separate uh, module for creating or working with web apps I'll show you how, how we can increase or decrease based on the demand and all. Okay. And built in, we can integrate or we can deploy uh, this do with the CI CD. CI CD in the sense continuous integration and continuous deployment, where I have a repository on my GitHub or I have a repository on my Azure DevOps. I can directly integrate those uh, repositories to this web with the help of this. I can perform uh, easy deployments. I can do a deployment very easily in a controlled manner. So that is one of the key features. And it supports custom domain. Okay, I can I can have my own domain. I can define my own custom domain like facebook.com, google.com. I can have my own domain, okay? And I can bind my own SSL certificate for this web app. Okay, this is one of the feature we call and I can integrate the app with Azure AD. Suppose I wanted to do an integration, I can uh, perform an integration with Azure AD. That is also one of the important point you have to consider while creating web apps. Okay, this is a key functions uh, web services we call it as. Okay, these are the web services which you can so now <clears throat> Azure Logic Apps. So how the Logic Apps works, we'll see. So now we'll go to this and we'll see about Logic Apps. So this is the Logic App. The symbol you can see here, I'll just even make sure. Logic Apps, okay. This is a Logic App. This Logic Apps is a workflow automation. <clears throat> I can create a workflow automation service and what it will do is it allows you to build a workflow and uh, you can integrate various services in the system while uh, i can say making it easy to automate the business process suppose i just wanted to show you uh, like <clears throat> i'll just give you one of the uh, important uh, point like I wanted to send an email for 1000 participants. Okay, what what I can do is we create one logic app. Inside that logic app, I will call email service. And in that email service, I'll fetch 1000 or 5000 uh, uh, contacts. Once I fetched it, automatically, simultaneously, the emails get triggered for multiple uh, clients. Okay, this is one of the uh, features which we can do logic apps. Logic app means it creates a workflow, okay, workflow. It is a kind of a workflow after step one, perform step two. In step two, if this result is successful, yes, then it performs a different activity. If in the workflow, if workflow, some of the conditions are not met, it can perform another activity also. It's kind of a workflow with if and else statement like yes or no if it is yes then it performs action if it is no again it performs certain actions so this is one of the workflow okay these are the azure web services we call okay and main uh, key feature what i can uh, tell you here is without doing the coding okay with visual design you can create a workflow I will tell you, we have logic app also in the web app section. I will just tell you how to create a logic app, how to work on this, and how to implement the plans. Okay, I am just explaining the terminology and the workflow. What is this mean by workflow and how it comes into picture? Okay, these are the web services we got. 
and <clears throat> in this one important point is uh, custom connector this custom connector is a very powerful tool in logic apps which creates an integration services to other applications like i can do a custom connector where i can invoke a function app i can invoke virtual machine i can invoke any of the resources in azure we call it as a custom connectors and we can perform custom integrations and this is very reliable and uh, executions and monitoring we can perform monitoring we can do with application insights and we can integrate on public and private network also and you can you have to choose the storage account storage account is mandatory okay for this so this is a uh, what i can say uh, azure logic apps this is completely workflow automation service okay now uh, you will define one workflow i'll just show you this is a diagram yes uh, neeraj yes i'm on phone uh, can you bit increase the font I'm oh sorry about... font yeah. okay. okay okay sorry okay. yeah on the screen like so that i can see it able to see now yes yes thank you okay sure so logic apps uh, workflow just show you an image you will get yes so this is you can see this is one of the logic app so this is what i'm talking about a workflow an example will we'll, while implementing the things we will do okay so you can see this is one of the workflow which i'm talking about this is a logic app designer okay once the logic app is created we can create a designer so what it is telling is whenever an http request is issued based on the condition you create a customer send an email response is completed so these are the uh, actions you can perform so this is kind of a workflow the logic app will be looking like this and you can define all the conditions here. Okay, we will see the different example also. So any workflow, uh, this is one of the workflow. Like when any, any any resource event happened, if condition is true, then it comes here. If it is false, then it comes. Here. This is one of the logic app. It, it will look like this way. This is a workflow, which I'm talking about. Okay, this is a listener rather than coding. So this is a logic app. No need of code. Just you have to implement uh, like this way just you have to drag and drop all the options while playing the logic playing with logic apps i will explain you how the things looks like okay so this is just a brief idea about the services web services okay let's move on to api apps okay so this api apps is also a service that enables you to build, host, and consume uh, uh, services in the cloud. So I'll just show you how this API app looks like. So I'll go to here. This is Logic Apps API apps. Okay, this API app is there in marketplace. Okay, so you can see this create API app. So what this API app will do is this is this will be not this they, it will not have any UI. It is just the RESTful APIs. Anyone knows a, a thing background on RESTful, or you want me to explain like RESTful APIs? Yeah, please explain. Yeah. Okay. See, RESTful APIs in the sense, uh, there is no user interface. There is there will be just uh, data. Suppose if uh, I can define my web application into two to three ways, okay? Like architecture-wise, I can define my application into two ways. I'll just go to the paint. Uh, okay, this is my paint. Here, what I can say is say this is my uh, web and this is my... Okay, control. And this is my API. Okay, so this is web app. Okay, this is my API app. Nowadays, uh, you could have seen like uh, 
and let's show you API app. I'll just show you a simple example where uh, suppose you have a Facebook account. Okay, for Facebook account, you will you will install Facebook Messenger or you will install Facebook on your mobile also, and you will browse the data also. Okay, so on the browser, on the browser. Okay, on the browser, no, like on your uh, once you browse it from the uh, um, browser like uh, Edge or Edge browser like Facebook.com. So what happens is the UI will be completely different. Okay, the UI is UI is similar, but it is different. But what people internally they will do is they will define a UI based on your screen size. Suppose you are logging in from the system means. They will uh, render the different UI altogether, but to the back end, it will communicate to the same API because the, it communicates in the form of data. You say you log into your account, it will show you profile pic, it will show you the image, albums, and all. So it's talking to the API. Talks to the API. Once it gets, it renders into the application. So again, same thing, what Facebook will do, it will create one more app. We call it as an app web app or mobile app okay they will define a user interface differently for the app okay user interface is different user interface is different it will the screen size will look smaller and the user interface will be different here this will be an app so but back end what they will do is they will not create or they will not uh, uh, define or design this API. The API app will be same. Only the thing is they will send the data to this. Your profile pic will be also look to the similar because the data is coming from the app. So this in this way, the user interfaces will be different. Like you could have seen uh, like for multiple applications, uh, the app, install and the browser you do the data you will similarly the same so what we call it as this is restful services restful services okay we call this as restful services the reason being uh, you can define multiple uis with same data point with the same uh, entry and exit because in future after 10 to 15 years if new UI comes into picture, like new uh, technology comes in the user interface, you can uh, squash this and you can you develop a new one, but the data will not change at all. After 10 years also, your data should appear to the previous data only, which you are looking in the, this browser now. And after 10 years also, you wanted to see the similar data. So that's the reason we call this as RESTful service. Okay, so this is what about a RESTful. Okay, so here this this especially this creating an app is defined. I will create only this test. So this UI and all is managed by organization. Like if they wanted to change after five years, they can change it without impacting the data. They will create a new user interface and they will tie that data to the service. So internally, the RESTful, creating the RESTful, we call it as creating an API app. Got the point? Clear? Yes, no? Yes, yes. OK. So this is about a RESTful API. So data and databases will be similar. Only the UI and the user interface will vary. So here, we are creating the uh, data, like uh, this. Um, what I can say this one. We are API admins. I uh, will create uh, these services and you can utilize for multiple apps. And some of the people, what they do is they will uh, give some of the services uh, on pay as you go model. Like if they wanted to utilize, they will give for rent. Again, multiple things are there, but this is very powerful one. This API app is a very powerful one where you can utilize, you can create a central kind of a repository with a time with the database and you can view it, view that data in a different, different manner. Okay, this is all about REST API and this is 
one of the what I can say important point in the REST API where you can create a resource and again this can be connect this will be connected to your repository you can do a, a ci cd check-in deployment and all you can control it from the branch okay and you can monitor it performance with application insights uh, this has similar features okay so then we one thing is the security the security among this uh, this security no? like uh, we will manage this security with OAuth API keys and policies like you have heard about the JWT token OAuth and all so we'll send a token of services define a tokens tokens here with the tokens we will authenticate the resources which we are requesting I can't request directly without my token or without my authentication okay so token plays an important part here okay that is one of the important where restful we can define a restful services with the api creating API. okay so mobile apps so this is also one of the important so yeah, mobile apps mobile application this is especially designed for mobile applications such as authentication data storage and push notifications for this purpose suppose you explicitly want to create an application for mobile we have mobile apps you can utilize this so so here we have i'll just show you mobile mobile <coughs> app api one minute. Some kind, sometimes the services can be different. I guess for Google. Let me go to the marketplace. So this is the marketplace, like uh, same like our Google and all. You can search here. Yeah. So this is the mobile apps. So Azure only. You can see this. This is also considered as a mobile app, and here this is also considered as a mobile app. So these are the things where you can create a resource, you can deploy and you can use the services. Okay. These are the services you can utilize for any kind of a service. Okay. Suppose you don't want to create any Azure resource with mobile app, you can you can utilize these services as well. Okay, these are the third party services defined and designed for its own usage. So, however, like uh, how you use, no, like Google Play Store or App Store for the apps in uh, in Azure also, we have a marketplace. I just wanted to show you that also. So, we have a marketplace. Marketplace means uh, you will get apps, you will get the defined uh, packages here. If you select this Azure services only, these are the Microsoft built-in services, except Microsoft, like if you check this, only Microsoft services will come into picture here. Okay, this is the Microsoft services will come into picture. If you don't want uh, the Microsoft, you can, if you can uncheck it and the other services, like these are the defined by Postgre team and Euro Excel, and uh, this is the, Introduction solution. So for their own uh, purpose, they have defined the package. You can install it or you can create this resource if you have a subscription of the MangoDB or if you have a subscription of Ubuntu, you can utilize it. So these are the marketplace where we can have apps. Okay, so now mobile app.
okay you can utilize it the visit for mobile apps so most probably what we can say is uh, mobile apps are now people will not design so we call it as a uh, there is one more feature azure api management api management api management huh. so people will use this api connection and api management service where you can create explicit resources for explicit nowadays people are using this so this mobile api is very old one time like 2020 2021 20, 20, so this nowadays you can use this create api so here explicitly you can define your own what i can say uh, apis and points and you can define a uh, security and the access uh, for uh, apis keys and the policies and you can do uh, analytics and monitoring of this api which endpoint has consumed how much and how many requests we got on single endpoint or single restful services so you can define a gateway routing and load balancing request also so when most popular is similar to mobile can do create api management and services okay so this is one of the point which i want to highlight here okay now cloud computing services okay you can use this link i'll just show you that link okay let me share you is there in the ppt i'll just share you next point Okay, I'll just get that link in the chat. You can check this is cloud computing and the services. Okay, now I'll move to next slide. Yeah. <clears throat> now this is one of the important terminologies. So Azure terminologies, like if I say resource means where you have to look. If I say subscription means where you have to look. And if I say Azure account, what is Azure Account Administrator and what is Active Directory? So we'll go one by one. So resources. So this is one of the important uh, point. So the resources means we have multiple resources in Azure, and you need to check what are these services and how this resources will looks like. Like I need, uh, I wanted to check Azure Virtual Machine. And I wanted to check virtual network. I wanted to check storage account. So how the resources are defined at Azure level. So this one, I'll go here and we go to this. And this is one and I, I'm into home screen. Okay, just uh, keep an eye on this. If you can still be able to see this data device. So you can see, so suppose this is my subscription. I'm into this subscription. Okay, you will be always into the subscription. What you have to do is click on subscriptions. Uh, once you click on subscription, you have to click on this. And here you will see the resources. Okay, you can see this resources here. Okay, so currently I don't have any resources. I have only two with this log analytics and which is this. Suppose you wanted to check how many resources are there. So every resources will get listed here. Like virtual machine, you will get listed. You will get listed with logic apps. You will get listed with app service. So let me create one resource, a simple resource to understand what is meant by. So you in the resource, you can see only two things here. Now I'll create one resource. Okay, I'll just create a simple and a free app service create app okay and i'll just say new resource group say test app service okay rg rg stands for resource group i'll say app service rg i'll give the name of the app uh, sample app check 
Okay, so this is the name. I'll just say .NET six long term support Windows. And you can see this plan. I'll just say ASP test plan. Okay, I can give I'll give the name. So currently I will just use free model because I wanted to show you just a simple resource how the resource will come. So this is the creation now deployment. I don't have any GitHub defined for this. If you have GitHub, you can authorize and you can select your organization. So currently I don't have network. I'll keep as is public only. Monitor, I don't, don't want any monitor tax. If you want, you can define tax. Currently, I'm just using a free one. So you can see I'm creating the name of the app is simple app check and resource group is this. Okay, create. So it's initiating a deployment. What happens is if you go to the under the subscription and if you go to the resource, <clears throat> so every resources under that subscription will be listed. So that is the one point which I wanted to update. Oh, sorry, Neeraj, what is this resource group? Uh -huh. I didn't uh -huh. that, that is there in the next. Okay. Okay. I'll, I'll just tell you that also. The yes, resource group is just a logical uh, segregation of the resource. That's it's the logical how you create a folder in your system, a computer, like to understand uh, what are these resources. So same way, in our Azure, we call it as resource group. Okay, so whatever the name or uh, service name and all, uh, it would be provided by the organization itself, right? So what uh -huh. we have to create. Yes, yes. You can it's just a folder logical segregation that resource group will have. Okay. okay. Now go to the resource. So this is my resource is created. I have created simple app check. So this is running and this is live. You can access now. This is a live site. It will take some first time to load. You can use it. I'm just saying this. So this is a live website which you have created. I have pinned that link in the chat, you can access it. So simple app check. We have posted one app, app service. So to see to see this resource, you no, know, like uh, to understand for the newer, for the new business. So they wanted to check, okay, how many resources are there. So now I'll go here and go to the resource. See, my resource comes here, you no, know, app service. I just have created app service. Initially you have to, have created app service plan. It will show entire, you have 100, 200, 500 resources. It will display all. And you can filter this resource here. You can filter. Suppose I wanted to check on the online app service, you can just apply filter. And I just wanted to, based on my location. So this is in East US. So just display me the data on East US. It will show you only the East US same data. Okay, you can apply filter, you can apply everything here. So this is one of the advantage. Because currently only three resources, four resources are there. So it is easy to see. But in uh, in real time, you will have 500 and 5000 plus resources. So at that point of time, uh, you can add a filter. You can, uh, based on your uh, uh, requirement, you can filter it and the data will come. Because sometimes... What happens is searching here is a tedious task, like which name and what and all. So based on here, you can find the all the resources. Here. So which means each resource, uh, one subscription is required and subscription is applicable for... Yes. I mean, network. I mean, yeah, whether it is a network resource, so one subscription storage, one application, one. So for... Every service that we avail, we have to have one subscription for each in place. Uh, subscription is mandatory. I'll just tell you the error uh, we have in the next slides. I think uh, that we call it as a subscription management. This is what uh, yes. you are asking. So under mm -hmm. the subscription, this resource groups, and under this, these are the resources. I'll explain. So per, 
Okay, a per subscription, how many resources? Is it only single resource or how no, you, you can the resource is different and resource group is uh, different here. So if you talk about subscription, subscription is mandatory. Without subscription, you can't create any resources or any resource groups. Mm -hmm. Okay, this subscription is mandatory. So subscription it is uh, applicable. Uh, I mean, it is applicable for resource groups or resources. Resources. And resources. Resource groups also. Okay. Both mm -hmm. because you can see this. This is a dependency of both. Yeah, like we have to have the subscription, so we will uh, pay per resource right and later on after paying we can categorize all those resources in uh, separate resource groups as uh, as per our requirement right yeah. yes but by creating only you should separate it once you create a resource uh, you can move it to different resource group but managing that is a little headache what you do is you just create a resource group under that you can create the multiple resources okay mm -hmm. Thank that you. is the hierarchy. I'll just explain when this is like uh, Azure with portal. No, this is subscription management. Um, that's the reason I take on this slide as a subscription management. So we can mm -hmm. use Okay. So now, now this is the resource. Resource means under the subscription. Under the subscription, how many resources are there? Irrespective of the resource group. I'm just talking about resource. Mm -hmm. I have. Mm -hmm. 100 resources, 100 resources will display here. Okay, now one more thing I wanted to highlight. So, you are, this is the resource provider. Don't get confused, resources and resource provider. Resources means you will be able to see a type of a resource like app service, log analytics, app service plan and all. Once I talk about resource providers, so for every resource in Azure, we'll have its own provider. So, my app service work comes under Microsoft.web. My VM comes under Microsoft.compute. Okay. So for every resource, you will have a resource provider. Microsoft, I just say Microsoft.compute. Okay. Let me just say Microsoft dot compute will come for uh, should display that. Ah, you can see this. This is Microsoft dot compute. Uh, it will be. This is for uh, virtual machine. Okay, how you will see this virtual machine and how you will identify. So every resource provider has its own unique identity. And you can see this register, register, register. So this is also important point. Suppose you wanted to create Azure AD. You can't create because it is not registered. First, you have to register this Microsoft AD. Then only you can work or you can play around this. If it is not registered under the subscription, you can't do any operations on this. So first thing, if you face any issue in creating the services, few of the services, so you have to check, come to resource provider and check whether my service is registered or not. Then only you can uh, verify. So how to check this so resource provider? Azure. Okay, this is the list you'll get. This is the list you will get. So Azure Virtual Machines. Ah, you can see this. This is what I'm talking. So Microsoft AD means you will work with intradomain and uh, uh, compute. This compute Microsoft compute means you will work with the virtual machine and you will work with scale set. Now I have created a web app now. Microsoft dot web will be there. So Microsoft dot web. Uh, Microsoft dot web. This is for app service. I have just created an app service. 
So if this Microsoft dot web is not registered under my uh, this subscription, I will be not in a position to create an app. So this is this is one of the important link I will share you. Okay, so this is the resource providers. Okay, so for every resource we have resource providers. Okay, for every resource you can just check whether that service is registered or not. So for Azure portal, you can see this portal. This will be registered. And this quantum. So these are the services. These are Azure services. Okay, if Microsoft.network is there, then I can utilize all these services. Application review, front door, load balancer, traffic manager, virtual network. So these are the services. So let us see much. See, network is registered here. Okay. You can utilize all of this resources. You can create this resource without any issue. If these services are not registered, you can have a privilege to register here, re-register or register, register, and you can work or play around on that. Okay. See, now I have registered Microsoft AID and successfully registered. It will give you this site. So this is clear. Got clear idea on this. Yes, no? Or you get confused? Yeah, a little bit of confusion. Okay. Uh, nothing, no need to worry. So resources means it will give the number of apps or number of resources which you have created so if you talk if you go about uh, this app service it will come with the uh, system dot like what i can say uh, this one i don't want to uh, if you uh, talk about app service so if you don't have this uh, uh, microsoft dot web is registered under my uh, resource provider then you will not be in a position to create this so that is what I'm talking about. Okay. It should display okay. somewhere here. I'm not able to see that. that. Okay. So we'll be knowing like what is the resources that's stacked. So based yes. on that, we can work on it. Okay. Yeah. So suppose you no need to worry about this because your organization will take care of uh, this, uh, what I can say, resource providers. Okay. Okay. But if you still wanted to check, like if you are into tenured one and few of the new services you wanted to verify, suppose I'll just show you a simple example. I wanted to use Microsoft uh, app security, one of the app security I wanted to use. This is not registered. I wanted to create it from here, app security. Okay. I wanted to create some uh, security or I wanted to add it from my uh, a marketplace. I can't. It will give you error because this is not registered. So before creating any service, check the resource provider and check here whether this is registered or not. If it is registered, then you can directly create here. If it is not registered, creating is not possible because that is not authenticated. It will deny the service. Okay. So for how to check the resource provider for which services, this is the link. You can go for this link and you can check. Uh, this is the link where you can uh, check. You wanted to check Pi G, you wanted to uh, give about virtual network, and you wanted to check monitor. You can utilize this. Let's start. Okay. This is uh, all about a resource provider and Deployment, so any deployment happens on the subscription, you can see here deployment and deployment task. Currently, I didn't do any external deployment, so you can utilize this deployment link. Okay, and even I just wanted to show you one more example. So just we have created an app service, no? So activity log. This activity log explains what are the operations we have performed and when the operations like it's kind of an audit log okay what are the things applied what are the information we have tracked so if anything someone changes anything on the resource someone modify anything on this service go to activity log check here 
So you will get users, username and everything will get listed. Any operation like start, stop or anything. Suppose I do a start and stop operation. So I'll say stop. Okay, stop successfully. Okay, I'll say start. Started successfully. If I go to activity log, so this event will be logged here. It will take some time to reflect. It should get logged. Yeah. So this is an activity log. What operations, what, how many has performed, what are the things. Everything get logged in this state. Okay. It will take some time to reflect, like you can check for 15 to 20 minutes. But these operations will be logged here. Okay. So that is one of the important point of activity log. So almost for every resource signature, you will have this activity log. Activity log and you can check these activities. Okay, so now Okay, sorry. Yeah, this is a subscription. So what does this subscription stands for? Subscription is stands for like on each Azure resource, uh, it's associated with only one subscription. You can just check here. Yeah, each Azure resource is associated with one subscription. Creating a subscription is first step to adopt Azure. Based on a subscription only, you can create a resource Without subscription, you can't create any resources. Okay, that is one of the important point. Suppose I have a subscription here. So for every resource, the subscription is tied because for the billing, you can see this for every resource, the subscription is will be tied. Okay, for app service, this is my app service, the subscription will be tied. So suppose I'll go for the other services, you will see. So I uh, I go for my subscription. I go for the resources where all resources will be listed. I go for default workspace. Okay, you can see for every resource this is log analytics. So this resource the subscription will be tied. Okay, so under the subscription you will get resources. Okay, so. This is one creating. You can't so creating a subscription on the first step and adopting to Azure. Okay, then Azure account. So once you create an account, the email address that you provide. So you create an Azure subscription and this you can check. So where you can check Azure account, you can check here. So this is my Azure account. Okay, you can go to the my account. So this will open a separate <coughs> tab. So here it will show me all the subscriptions and the data. So this is my Azure account. You can see this is the Azure account. And you can see how many privacy, securities and all. And it will show me all the data. And you can change the password. It, uh, it will see all the data. And it shows what the context is. So if you want, I can add a devices. I can do Utilization, I can do all the storages, everything I can do. Payment options, payment history, security, privacy, and everything I can manage. So additional security. So this is my Azure account. This gives me all the information about the account region and all. Okay. You can utilize this. For creating once you create now it will ask you everything you can just configure this okay so this is your Roger account so payment and billing history billing history sub services and subscription devices everything you can see so this is especially an Azure account okay so you can utilize and Azure administrator so suppose you are, if you have an account administrator, the account administration will come into picture and uh, he will uh, give you all the uh, permissions and all. 
let me check I can see my account where I need to go to a b go It is not I'm all about to say. Usually you should see in active directory. Yeah. So this is my uh, Azure Active Directory where a role administrator. So under role administrator, I should see my Yeah. So this is I'm a member. I'm just a member here. Um, you know, it should be there. You can have your. You can see this is the access policies, and you can see this user type and all those things. Okay, so this is my admin. <clears throat> and let's see some of the groups also. So you would probably you can you will see here. Once once I'm talking about AD, I'll just help you. <laughs> Where you can see the roles here, roles and administrator only here. So, so yeah, sorry, here it is. Global administrator. I'm a global administrator. Um, administrator role I can perform. <clears throat> so these are the things you can see uh, in the roles. Okay, this is all about uh, Azure Active Directory administrator. So here Azure AD, uh, cloud-based role and access management. You can perform everything. So when I'm explaining the role management and role access, I will explain you about uh, complete when, where to assign a role, how to see the role, and what your role is. Azure administrator. We okay. are a global administrator, so this is the ability. Okay. Uh, so any doubts or any clarification you need, just let me. Um, I think from me, I'm good. Thank you. Okay, uh, Suprita, good? I guess Neeraj, good. Okay, so Monday onwards, like uh, what we will do is uh, we'll try to cover uh, this entire uh, Azure terminology in 10 and 40 million by 10 and resource groups. These are the terminologies, very important. So I'll help you to cover and I'll show you about some of the uh, legal uh, agreements, legal agreements and all those things. Monday we will cover try to cover second one and let me know if you feel like you wanted to cover or you wanted to uh, few things like uh, you wanted to check or few things you can just post me I'll just help you to resolve those queries okay yeah sure thank you so, sure thank you thank you so much thank you thank you bye thank bye. you bye bye